Alright, so uh, this is my first live stream. Welcome to the channel, folks. And uh, I'm set up here to do a tear down and look inside the GRS yoke. Um, so, going to be opening this up and doing a, a quick look to see uh, if we can see what the button encoder looks like. Uh, because when earlier today I plugged this into uh, my PC for the first time, I noticed that the controller actually registered 15 inputs. So um, I was super excited to see that because I think that means we could potentially add more buttons. Hey, what's up, Greg? Thanks for joining. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I'm set up here. If you guys don't know me normally, um, I am one of the folks that started modding Arcade 1UP yokes. And so this is a sample uh, version of a panel that I modded, added my own buttons into it, and we're using an APAC encoder, which is made by Altamark, uh, to wire up the default yoke and then add in all these extra buttons and the beauty about the buttons is that uh, my custom playlist that I've designed uh, really helps me add uh, more games that can utilize those buttons, uh, console games, uh, most recently Star Wars Squadrons was an awesome PC game that has tons of input so you can really use more buttons on a yoke mod um, but I absolutely am in love with this mod for folks that have been following my channel and know uh, you know I've been modding Star Wars yoke mods for the last six months or so and it just keeps getting better in terms of the games that I find that can use it. Um, it's a racing cab. You can use it as a flyer, um, as a shooter, um, all sorts of things too. So I've been really excited with what I've been able to do with these panels. But long story short, I backed this Kickstarter campaign before I ever started modding Star Wars jokes back in December last year. So, um, you know, I, I back then had zero knowledge about arcades and, and what I was going to do and how to set things up. I had even, no idea even what Sega Model 3 was in terms of the emulators to, to get Star Wars Trilogy and Battle Pod work and those are my two main goals. Um, but this is uh, going to be uh, you know, super exciting to see 11 months later it finally coming, uh, you know, and a lot of people have been saying, hey, is this going to be a replacement for the the, the mods that I've done? Um, I don't know. The only thing that I know is, um, you know, my first impression is that this is a tank. This is super sturdy, uh, way more heavier than I expected. I think that's the first thing that, you know, even Coltoy mentioned um, when he did his review and anybody else that's taken a look at this. When you get this in your hands, there's no doubt how solid this feels compared to the plastic of the arcade one-up yoke. So that's the first and foremost thing that you'll see. A couple of other things you'll notice right off the bat. Um, it's very smooth in terms of the um, the, the, the the actual controls itself. Uh, it real, feels really smooth like butter. Like this is a little bit springier. Um, this feels way better. Uh, and the buttons on the bottom, it feels like they're actual micro switches on the bottom. And then they are um, you know not clicky on the top there. Hey, what's up, Bobby? What's up, Zen? Thanks for joining. This is my first time doing a live stream, so I have no idea if this is working. Uh, so hopefully it sounds okay. Um, but a couple things, Let's before we dive into this, uh, as you can see, there's no logo here. Um, so I printed my own little logo. I'm probably going to add this on a little bit later, just so I can have my uh, my new Kong's Arrest logo that you see in the corner there. That's a new thing that I've been uh, trying to get out there. And I'll do a demo of my playlist later on. But let's start opening this up. Um, let's, let's see what we can do with this. So uh, here it is. We're, we'll start diving in. I'll plug it in uh, while we go and see if I break anything. Um, so let's do that first. Let's plug it in, make sure it's working and testing first. Um, I will just switch over um, to my um, my desktop. Let's just switch over to my desktop for a second. Okay, so I'm in my desktop right now. I'm going to, that's my LaunchBox playlist. Um, Let's go to Setup USB Game Controllers. I just like to type in USB. And then here we can see that this yoke is actually called the BL Flight Yoke 1. Um, and so when you click on it, uh, let me see if I can um, make this small so that we can see it at the same time. Move this down. I'm going to make this second monitor smaller okay there so that way you can still see what's going on or maybe i'll do it the other way sorry i'm super new to doing live streams i'm like ah what do i want to show you guys i have no idea how to use this all right so let's go back to the i want this to be the main monitor let's do that okay where do i cam this is going to be front so yeah let's make this nice and big 
and then we'll make this smaller. Okay, all right, that's what I want to do. Okay, so for here, um, now, hopefully you guys are seeing the yoke in the corner, and then my main desktop is the main thing I want you guys to be looking at. Okay, cool. So here is the uh, USB flight controller. So when we plug it in by default, uh, you can see automatically it feels great. You know, everything's turning, looking great. Uh, the triggers, the one, two, it looks like the bottom right is one, the bottom left is two, the top right is three, the top left is four. So that's your one, two, three, four buttons. On the bottom of the yoke here, you're gonna see two metal buttons here. So this button on the left is button number seven, that's what registers. And then the button on the right here registers as, as number eight right there and then there's a power button on the back so it's just another button back here and this is actually just your power button and by holding certain buttons and holding the power button that changes it into mouse mode so haven't really dived too much into that particular stuff yet but I wanted to show like the possibilities because this is what got me excited of why I wanted to open this there's there's 15 inputs there but there's only six buttons that are registering there's got to be an encoder inside that's going to let me wire up some extra buttons. So have my toolbox, have some extra buttons. And if that's possible, for folks that want to do a control panel mod, you can do it. You know, get rid of the APAC, not have a second encoder in there. It's going to help out so much to have a single controller like this and have 15 button inputs. So that's the goal to see if we can do it. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back and make this our main thing in focus. Alright, so let's start. We're going to start opening this up and seeing how we're doing. And I'm going to turn back this to see. Cool. Alright. Hey, <laughs> hey, hi. Thanks for uh, joining. Super excited to see you. Alright, cool. So, uh, Jamie, nice to see you guys. I'm going to start drilling in here. So let's start taking it apart. The first thing I see here are um, four screws on the top part of the yoke so there's two there there's two more on this back side here All right. okay so let's lift this off and um, again I'm going in pretty blind into this to seeing how this actually works so uh, in the original one the four screws would go ahead and lift off this front plate but uh, I'm not seeing that come off as easily as the original one, so it's good news that it's really built pretty sturdy. Um, looks like it's a plate that I can lift, so let's see if I can lift it on both sides and lift it up. So lift and lift. Now this is the part where you're like, oh, am I going to break it on my first, first try? Let's see. It lifts up a little bit, and then there's a plate. All right, let's see if there's anything else that we can unscrew first. So uh, there's a lot of stuff back here on the back side. Um, looks like this is all the different types of wires. I'm like, that's the that's also the super cool thing about how many different ways you can hook this up. This is the uh, original arcade plug. You have a USB plug for the PC, and you have the um, replacement plugs um, for your arcade one up as well. So. Um, we're gonna dive into here and, and start taking it apart. Man, I should have did my research on how I was gonna take this apart first. <laughs> uh, and maybe not do it on the live stream. But yeah, there's there's my son back there. He's telling me like, oh, I'm a, am I a noob? Am I a live streamer noob? Hey. All right, let's start taking out some of these drills here. Let's see. All right, and if I break my yoke live on YouTube, Man, maybe I can ask Glenn for a replacement, huh? <laughs> no, I'm not uh, sure if we should do that. No. Man, these are really tight. Oh my goodness. Might have already stripped my... Um... Alright, let's see if we can get in here. I look at that, I might have already stripped my first screw. <laughs> I gotta go run and get another screwdriver for this. Oh, Man, this, God. I know, this is so so newbie of me. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you should have planned that. I should have planned this. All right, well, this is a tank. This is way harder than I thought it would be. Steve has a tank? Oh, there it goes. Woo! Okay. So, was was pride on? Maybe that was a little bit easier. 
All right, so <laughs> that that popped off a little bit harder than I expected, but this whole thing is solid metal. I had to kind of pry both sides open a little bit for it to kind of come off. And uh, this is it. This is the inside of the yoke. I don't think I have to do much more than this because I can pretty much access and look at everything from here as far as I can tell. Um, cool. All right, so let's take a look. Wow, this is so, so interesting. So we have... Um, I believe, so this isn't using a traditional uh, potentiometer setup, right? So normally in the uh, stock Star Wars yoke, you'd have pots, these things that would turn, and that's what would make it, uh, you know, read your signals. But this is using kind of magnetic sensors here. So this is the sensor here for your up and down motion. So this is your Y axis type of motion here. And then you have another sensor right here. So this is your X axis sensor here. So there's this metal bar here. So as you turn the yoke, See if I can get in there. If you turn the yoke, that, that metal bar is the magnet that's creating that sensor right there on this little piece right there. So these two pieces are essentially what's replacing the potentiometer. So there's less less contact. Uh, that's what Glenn was talking about for you know not having um, anything uh, breaking as, as easily because everything's not touching. You have the two magnetic sensors here. It's turning on your x-axis and turning up and down on your y-axis. So that's super cool. I've not you know, seen this version of it. The other uh, joystick that I'm familiar with that uses the like a magnetic sensor um, is the uh, you know the Altamark flight sticks. So Altamark flight sticks, I have a sample over here. Alright. So this is a sample of an Altamark uh, flight stick. And again, this is one, another one of those types of analog sticks, but it uses a traditional, not a traditional kind of pot signal, but it uses a magnetic sensor here. Um, so I knew it was going to be something like that, where you'd have a big metal rod and then moving along kind of some sort of sensor. So um, that's super cool to see how they did it. The inside of this is, is really awesome. Um, but the main thing I'm really... Oh, <laughs> sorry, I knocked over my camera. Noob status, here we go. All right, so the main thing that I'm really uh, interested in is uh, seeing how the buttons are encoded, uh, the, how the button encoded. All right. All right, I think I'm back. So, um, Sorry, my goodness, that was a super noob uh, not having a PC that can handle um, a live stream, apparently. My PC froze in the middle of my stream, so super sorry about that. So I wonder if I can edit this out. Man, this is why I like doing tutorials and things first before doing this. I thought I'd try this live streaming bit, um, but um, are you laughing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> this guy, he's like, oh, look, I'm a streamer now, right? But I'm, I'm a failed streamer. All right, cool. Um, all right, we're going to keep going and uh, do the rest of this now to see if, uh, yeah, if I can look at the buttons and the rest of it. So, okay, cool. So I'm back on. Um, let's go ahead and, um, and keep taking a look at this right now. So, okay, cool. So going to take a look inside here. So the, the buttons here this is your input and this is your ground and you have the four buttons here and these are all look like they're going into a relay connector board right over here uh, and then your pots uh, the two pots I was explaining about are actually going into um, another connector back here so this connection here is um, managing the potentiometers the x and y axis and this looks like it's controlling all the button interfaces um, so interesting how everything is set up. So these two are the power. Okay. These, this, um, there's wires that are in here that are going into here. So these triggers are actually coming in from these wires. So we have these wires here that are the inputs for the yoke trigger buttons. And then, um, yeah, the button five and six there and then the power. So that's, that's it. That's the only thing that's plugged into this little interface right here. I'm curious about why, when you plugged it in, there was so much room for more buttons. There's not a lot of room to play with at all in here. So, um, yeah, if there are, if there is a possibility to add more buttons somehow, um, you might have to to go the route of like soldering, and um, 
and seeing if you can solder another input somewhere. So it looks like, I mean, this is it. So let's see if we can pull this out and see if that actually does anything else. Okay, so I can see my class. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And then, yeah, these are all the, the different input designs that we have here. So you have so many different versions. I mean, these, these are just the extra wires that are coming out. It looks like this smaller one is the input for the um, the USB and then this bigger one here is the input for either um, the arcade one up or the original arcade so lots of technology packed into this little guy that little encoder is pretty much it that's registering all the buttons doing all the logic board um, so yeah maybe this is gonna be a little bit more difficult than I thought to if we were gonna try to mod this up if do anything else with it so um, yeah, let me see if there's anything else we can see in here. I'm going to try to pull this out and see if there's anything else. All right. Okay, so we pulled out the main power wires. So yeah, so this here, these are your buttons for the two seven and seven and eight buttons that's your power switch essentially and that's your main buttons for the triggers that's it it's only six inputs but then this is just a regular um, you know looks like a, a 12 12 pin output into into this board nothing else that I can see that we can add buttons into so I mean I was excited to see if there's something that would be easy that we can you know solder another input into it have it just like come out of the wires on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna have to analyze this some more and take a take a deeper dive. Maybe even pull this whole thing out. Look at this. See what the little board does. Um, it is an expensive toy to tinker around with, though. So <laughs> as much as I'm excited about trying to figure out if it's doable, uh, this you know right now uh, retails. I think it was gonna be 265 bucks. We were super fortunate it during the Kickstarter campaign to get it for only 150. Um, and I know the expected retail was supposed to be around 200 or so. So, I mean, it's expensive. It feels great. Um, but yeah, maybe I don't have the luxury of having spare arcade one-up parts. But, you know, it's all for science. If I break it, I could always buy another one, right? So they'll be on Amazon soon at the end of September or December. And, you know, I love having tons of yolks. So I always am a believer that you can fix, you can fix anything. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's... I think that's it. So I'm probably going to end the video. There's not much more else that you can do with it um, besides taking a look on the inside of, of how everything's looked at. Um, I could do some demo and some gameplay um, really quickly. Maybe I'll just show off a little bit of my playlist and show you guys how this works. All right, cool. All right, so let's let's get back in here and just do some demo of, of it in action and so you guys can see. I'm gonna switch my second monitor as my main one and we'll make this smaller. Okay. Okay. So there's my main screen. That's my brand new logo. Thank you, Alex, Exovia Royale. Uh, did a great job with my logo. Just double check and make sure. Oh, see, that's me knocking over my camera again. All right, let's go USB game controllers. All right, there's the flat yoke. I took it apart, put it back together. So everything's still working like butter. So you can see how it's working. So up, down, left, right, trigger one, trigger two, trigger three, trigger four, two buttons on the bottom, seven, eight. I wish I could map. 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There has to be a way. Glenn, if you know the secret, if it's possible, let me know. <laughs> so I don't have to solder something and see if there's a way to add those extra inputs in here. I mean, if there's uh, some, something in the logic board that says that there's, there's, there might be a way, who knows? I don't know that much about circuit boards and stuff, but... I was hoping would be a pin or something that we can just easily access and tie something into. That would be the dream. All right, let's do some demo of some gameplay. Um, 
All right, let's pull up my version of LaunchBox. So LaunchBox is the main main thing that I run. So here is my LaunchBox build. So I created a brand new playlist. I've been working on it for the last several months. It's called Starcade Playlist 2. Uh, so this is a custom playlist with 300 plus games and they all are designed to work you know, somewhat with a yoke. Uh, a lot of those are actually pinball games. I added some pinball since that's a huge thing now. Um, but let's go into our Star Wars games and check out the original Star Wars game because that's the one that everybody wants to check and play. So let's check that out. We'll remap the controls. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see what's on the screen. All right, so here we go. Gonna hit tab. We're gonna go to this game's controls and just remap um, this. So we'll do Joy button one, we'll do this bottom trigger, joy button two. So those are gonna be our yokes, our main trigger buttons, and then the X and Y axis should be set up. Alright, so um, I guess with the six button setup, you would have these as your main triggers, and then these two buttons would be your start coin. So let's do that. Let's make this coin button over here. Um, button number, I guess that's seven. Let's let's do that one more time. So we'll delete. That's gonna be button number seven. And then for this game, there's no start button, but we would map this one to start. I like my coin on the right, my start on the left side. Um, but that should be it. So let's try this out. Okay, let's try in some coins. Coin, coin, coin. There it is. Pull trigger to start. Right. Oh, and I don't have this into a base, so uh, the hard thing is that it's going to be hard playing without a base. Should have thought about that before I did some testing, but let's see. So that's calibrating if you don't know if you're in the original Star Wars. All right, that feels really smooth. Wow, really accurate. No glitching, no stuttering, perfectly still. You know what's really satisfying is uh, the clicking on the bottom triggers. That is really different than the stock arcade one ups where it's just like uh, almost like a sand loss switch. This five, I'm going in. This feels really good. Use the ball loop. See all the stuff the gears on the inside they're working. I'm, I'm in my head thinking about Jennifer Yabbit and uh, how she's probably like, this guy is terrible at this game. I'm going to get like 5 million points and uh, I Yahoo! did not, did not use the force like I was supposed to. <laughs> I missed the port. I'm so bad at this original game. Alright, let's go ahead and exit out of this. Um, Alright, so exit, I'm just going to hit escape. Uh, normally in my build, I have a, a program called Joy to Key setup where I map like escape to my start coin button. So that might be something that we do as well. Um, I want to try, I want to try Battle Pod. Let's see if we can do Battle Pod. All right, so we're gonna open up Techno Parrot. And so uh, recently, I found a way to, I mean, uh, several months ago, Battle Pod now works and can be mapped um, by using just your triggers as your main main button. So let's do your analog yoke left, analog Y up. We'll make the view change button. We'll make it this bottom one here. We'll do the bottom view change button. My trigger is going to be this bottom one. My top one is going to be here. And then let's do throttle as this bottom left trigger and the brake as this top left trigger. So that would be perfect. Okay. So let's launch and do some battle pod. Uh, eventually, I'm going to be, I'll do a full review. I was going to have it a spare, spare panel. So I probably should have taken the time to see if I can mount this before doing this video. But I wanted to do like the raw burst test. So maybe I'll just hold it here, see if that'll hold it in place for a second. Yeah, that feels good. Okay. Let's just hold this in place for a second. Alright, there we go. That's at least holding it a little bit in place. All right, let's get it going. But um, anytime. There it is. All right, hit any button to start. Boom. All right, so 
Bell Gavin. See, with games like this, the modern games, you don't need those skills, Jennifer Yabbit. I can just play and have fun and not have to worry about getting a high score. Alert. But uh, I know all these classic gamers are really there about needing a high score. Me, I'm more about functionality just to see if I can have fun. So bottom button to trigger, works beautifully. Alright, it's good. Alright, so that up, down, thrust, break. It's a battle fire. Down. Alright. Oh, I am in love with the clickiness of these buttons. The clickiness is so good. I can, I can throttle, I can break. But yeah, the clicking is so satisfying. Compared to like these arcade one-up ones, yeah, that's, that's the best part about it. The clickiness of these buttons. It's really good. Really solid. Throttle break. You can tell I'm not, not too great at this game either. Oh, it's because I'm not even turning my face. Right. I don't need a throttle and break. Follow that tie bomber. Follow that tie bomber. She might be able to knock this easier. She just grab she just grab four screws and just plug this in. Maybe I'll do that later. The next video, I feel better at scratching the paint down there. We will see that later. Did it. Still fun. Still a favorite game. This is Trilogy. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated to map Star Wars Trilogy from Sega Model 3, so um, you know, maybe we can try that out in just a second too. But cool. Battle pod with the new yoke is awesome. So yeah, this is my playlist. I mean, you can see it works great. You just have to, you know, map the controls for the basic things. And and most of my playlists, like, you know, this these buttons look great. Um, my playlist works with just my basic mod. So my basic mod, let me see if I have a control panel here. I, I think I do here. All right, so this is, this is one of my basic mods where I just have two big red buttons here and then a start and a coin button. So essentially, I only have like two more buttons added in my base mod to make my entire playlist work. Um, but I think I can get away with trying to create a version of my playlist that just uses the six buttons where these are your main functional buttons and then these are just your start and your coin. Um, so yeah, that would be the only thing that I need to, to figure out to see see if that works. Um, yeah, we'll see how it works. Um, some other cool things, I have pinball. Have you ever played pinball with the yoke? Uh, you can do it can play some Star Fox, we can play some Shmups. Uh, I have Star Wars Squadrons loaded up. We can do some Squadrons and see how this works with another controller. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'll save that for another future video. But um, all right, let's see if anybody is still still watching. I have no idea if people are still here. So, cool. Is anybody still here? I have no idea how to interact with people on YouTube. There's 12 concurrent people, yeah? Can I get a, a thumbs up or a comment if people are actually still here? <laughs> this is so sad. I'm, I'm the worst YouTuber ever. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, there are people that are still watching. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Hank. Thanks, Zen. All right. Uh, do you guys want to see any other gameplay? Um, any requests for anything that you guys want to see? Kind of curious of doing some interaction here. What do you want to see? You want to see squadrons? Do you want to see some more of the actual playlist demo? What do you want to see?
Squadrons. All right, cool. So we got JV that wants to look at Squadrons. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see if we can load it up. Uh, squadrons is uh, is awesome. It's amazing. Uh, thanks, Joel Gorski, for helping me get this set up. But um, we're going to open it up and then see how we can map it to the controls. The cool thing about Squadrons is that um, it's a PC game, right? And so um, as a PC game itself, then um, it, it gives you greater flexibility to map as many buttons as you want to using multiple joysticks and controllers. Like uh, originally, you can play it with just your keyboard and your mouse, so there's all these little buttons and commands. Uh, when I played it with the controller, um, let me see if I can get my, my wide cam back. Is my wide cam still working? I don't know, my camera went away for the webcam. Let's see. Webcam, come back. <coughs> All right, I think I'm back. Am I back? All right, I think uh, I think I did the wrong thing. I think when I tried to launch Squadrons doing my screen share, it froze. So uh, let me see if I can do. Were you guys able to see the game, my gameplay before? Right? Did you? Were you guys able to watch um, Battle Pod? Okay, when I did my screen share. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me try to do an option using my capture device to do a game capture. So let's do squadrons. If this, isn't, if this doesn't work, then I'll just do a demo of something else, but I would really like to show you guys this. Properties for squadron. Capture in the full screen application. Okay. All right, we're gonna try. We're gonna try loading up Squadrons one more time. If it doesn't work, then uh, then uh, it's gonna be a fail. But we'll see. We'll see if we can get it going up one more time. All right, let's go to this. We're gonna load up Squadrons. Had it loaded in here. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Daddy? Yes. Uh, Macross, when I was the controller I was looking for that was supposed to be for Macross had like ashes in it. Oh, that's okay. Can I? Is All it, right. Is it okay if I can try to clean it out? Yeah. Did I can play? What did you say was wrong with it? That there's like uh, battery ashes in it. And oh, in the, over there. Nope. Yeah, just make sure you wash out your hands, okay? Son's asking me to play Battle Pot or uh, a Robotech game. All right, is it? I think it's working. I think you guys can see my full screen. Yeah. Let me pull up my live streaming over here. All right. Are we good? Can you guys see squadrons? Yeah? All right, nice. All right, cool. So let's start off by going to options. I'm gonna go to controls, and we're gonna remap controls. Okay, so we're gonna change our flight controls. We're gonna look at our controller here. So there's, there's a lot of things we can do in here, so um, con the contextual interaction sounds really suggestive, suggestive, doesn't it? Uh, so let's go our pitch up. So we're going to click here, pitch up. Um, let's see. Is it not registering? Are you? There. 
Okay. Oh, I have the picture of it going. I'm trying to remap my controls. So let's see if it just registers a button. So fire button. I want my fire button to be this button. Why is it not registering my fire button? Registering something, flight, flight stick. Oh, here we go, flight stick, not controller. All right, so flight stick. We're gonna do what I have to up, pitch down, yaw right, and then yaw left. Okay, so this game actually really is supposed to be like a dual, st dual stick game where you have like your main throttle like moving and then you have a second one that like makes you throttle, brake, and then like roll. So and without having a secondary thing here, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to map my second, I'm going to plug in this A pack here and make this my second controller. So you're going to see my stock arcade controller as a secondary controller. Sorry, my, sorry, you got to see my forehead. All right, so let's plug that in. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we're going to, I'm gonna use this and see if this works. No? Maybe I have to wait till it registers later on. Roll right. All right, I don't know if that's gonna work. Throttle decrease and increase. Let's just make that this button and then this button. We'll just do basic where we can go up, down, left, right. We'll do throttle increase with the top left and then we'll do main fire. Oh, I want to do the bottom trigger is fire. And then we'll do a right trigger. So um, this is a game that really could use all the buttons. This is why I wanted to really, really set up all the buttons because you have to have all these different commands and inputs and increase shield power focus thing. So having a control panel like this um, would be really, really handy. So that that's the only bad thing. Um, all right, is my is my webcam frozen? That's showing the yoke. All right. Alright, I don't know if the yep, webcam is working. So let's unplug it and plug it back in. I feel like my, my webcam is frozen. Is the webcam frozen on the yoke? I think it is. All right, let's delete this. Okay, we're going to add in another video capture device and then check the USB camera. Okay, I think we're back. All right, so there, it's back. All right. Um, so yeah, I was saying that it takes a lot of different keys and things to be able to maneuver this. So um, let's see if this actually came back. This come back. It's just I have to exit the game. All right, we're going to we're going to forego doing any yaw to see if we can get it working. All right, let's go. Let's jump into a game. Save and exit. All right, escape. Back. 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 Quick match. I'm gonna die if I do a quick match. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, let's go to practice mode. Uh, let's do that and start practice. I played the story mode and it was uh, pretty fun. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see what this practice looks like. And this camera is very sensitive. All right, I need to need to work on my YouTube ness. Customize your ships. Uh, let's just play. B, launch and practice. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go.
my webcam freeze again. Dang it. Alright, let's go to OBS. Webcam, why you keep freezing? Hail capture device. Tool. We're in squadrons, we're moving around with the yoke. Let me see if I can get the webcam back up and running. Okay, plus video capture device. Come on, there it is. Okay. There it is. Okay, now you can see it. All right. Here we are, back in squadrons, looking around. So I have thrust, break at the very least, and I can turn. That's pretty much all I can do uh, with the basic command structure. So I need to press 11 to access the practice menu. Where'd my sound go? Where am I going? Do I have anything to attack? Let's go around. This is really fun when you have it with an actual modded yoke. Like if you have one of my panels and you can buy squadrons and add it to your own playlist because uh, you know it's one of those games that's not cracked yet so you still have to buy it. You can absolutely add it into your Launchbox playlist and then for those that have premium mods with the extra buttons you will especially be able to go to town. Um, I actually found it actually very fun to play it with, um, I'm, I'm kind of pointing at this right here, but um, playing the yoke and using this mini throttle as kind of the secondary throttle, that was actually a really fun way to play Squadron. So I, re I really recommend for folks that have the mini throttle or like a flight stick, um, it's a fun way to play this game. Looks great. Shooting stuff, heading towards this. The only thing about PC games and these console games is like you're playing through the story and it's not not really like a quick quick arcade shooter like like other ones. Am I going back here? Oh, I can f select my ship. This is just practice. Okay, 12 deploy. Can I select a different ship? Okay. No, I can't. I'm not doing anything though. Alright, we're flying around, we're shooting at space. Maybe this is the practice that we're doing. I have to hold my base. So I'm flying around. That's my main ship. Maybe I can head towards. Oh, that's what I'm supposed to head towards. Okay, let's go to there. Control wise, it's very, very buttery. Already full. Flying. It's a beautiful game, I can say that much. I mean, you can just have fun flying around in free space. Um, and the great thing about the modded GRS yoke is that it, it works very simply. Practice menu. Okay, maybe that's what I have to do. Press 11 to access the press practice menu. I can't get to button 111. <laughs> There's not enough buttons on here. What do I press? Do I press F11? No target available. Alright, and then this is where you can use your keyboard commands too. So oh yeah, your keyboard by default works as well, so I'm pressing my keyboard over here. I mean, you could play this game with just your keyboard and your mouse, actually. I have my mouse on here, shooting. So this this is me playing the game, or with my mouse instead. But I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing, so yeah. But again, yeah, this game really does require way more buttons. But you can see, it's just a quick demo. It works. Um, but yeah, let's let's exit out of here so that we can show off something else. But that's Squadrons. Sorry, that wasn't the best best demo I know. Return to Imperial Hangar, and then let's exit out of the game. Okay. Uh, and it's even hard to just exit the game. Maybe I can just hard close it. Alright, let's hard close it out. 
Cool. All right. So there's that. Um, let me do a demo of while folks are here. I'll just do a live demo of my big box build as the final thing. And then I'll call it a night uh, just so that people can kind of see something else that I've been working on. I'm going to do a full video on this later. But here it is for the first time. My Starcade playlist 2.0. So I custom made a splash screen with our intro video. These are all my custom made playlist videos. So, the unique thing about kind of what I did, you know, there's lots of different options out there for playlists. If I curated and created my own kind of what I thought were good categories for playlists, it's not just one standard. Here's all your racing games, here's all your shooting games. Um, I like being able to find all my Mario Kart games or my shooters. Which ones are modern shooters, which are one be, or which are classic shooters, which have like most of the so they're the um, It also allows you to play a variety of cheat playlist, so I came up with a playlist for that. And then there's all those fun games like Crazy Taxi, which you know, usually gets tagged in a racing game, but it's really not. And you have these tank games. And then, um, I was able to add Star Wars and Ball and all the Ball FX to the table to my first place. So that's the intro. It's just a little bit less you guys can see the side of it. But here's a brand new splash menu. You can see me going through and sit and watch all the different themes. Um, so in total, uh, 12 unique playlists, and then I have six different pinball playlists. So yeah, pinball. One, two, three. Four. So uh, I even, uh, you know, even with the pinball FX stuff, there's not really a categorization that I saw. So I created kind of, you know, playlist categories for them. So we have your, all your Star Wars pinball games, um, your the universal ones that are kind of like Back to the Future, Jurassic Parks, all in one build. All the Marvel tables are all here as well. There's 23 tables. This is your classic Valley Williams one. So the Attack on Mars playlist would be on here. And then Pinball FX2 had tables that were imported into FX3. So South Park, Plants vs. Zombies. Um, these were tables that were uh, not very good. So those are going to be really fun. Uh, Dan Moizel was the one that uh, kind of forced me into making a Star Fox build. So we have a dedicated Star Fox build as we just Some of the flying games are here, which are cool. And a Schmucks playlist. This one was for Bobby Vu. Bobby Vu, to die for mods. Great collaboration there. But all these Raidens are here for mostly him and stuff. So this is the build, very simple. I'll do some more demo gameplay later on, but I'm pretty happy with everything. Um, so I'm gonna call it a night for the live stream. Thanks everybody for joining my my first attempt at doing a live stream. And um, you know the main goal was to see if we could mod this, but um, you know what I'm probably not gonna do is. I probably won't mess around with the hardware as much, but I will probably mess around with my software and see if I can get a version of this playlist where I can find games that only work with the four buttons and the start and the point button. So probably will get rid of a lot of the console games and other things that are really complicated, but we can play a lot of, of the arcade shooters and things in here pretty well um, with just the stock button. So, alright, I'm going to call it a night. Thanks guys for uh, watching the video, and uh, I'll see you next time. Yeah, how to close this live stream call it a night. Thanks guys. Yeah, exit out of here. Big box mode is ending. All right, let's let's do this. Let's end it. Officially ending now. Now, thanks guys. See you later.